and welcome to Fast and Factual. I'm Utsav Parekh and I'll take you through the top 50 stories of the day. Let's begin. Russia says that Ukraine just launched one of its biggest drone attacks on Moscow. It added that all the drones were destroyed. No deaths have been reported. However, two people have been injured in the attack. Ukraine has not acknowledged launching attacks against targets inside Russia. Russia launched a fresh attack on Kyiv on Monday. This came hours after an overnight attack on Ukraine's capital. Residents rushed to take shelter. Ukraine's armed forces have said that 11 missiles launched by Russia in daytime attacks were downed. The Kremlin has said that Russia would participate in the upcoming BRICS summit at a quote-unquote proper level. South Africa is the host of the BRICS summit. BRICS comprises of China, Russia, India, Brazil and South Africa. Africa. Earlier this year, the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant against Russian President Vladimir Putin. He has been accused of committing war crimes in Ukraine. South Africa would theoretically be required to arrest Putin if he arrives in the country. Fresh clashes have broken out in the northern part of Kosovo. Tensions increased after Albanian mayors took office in some villages in the region. It's a region with a majority of Kosovo Serbians. NATO's Kosovo force has said that the recent developments have prompted them to increase their presence in North Kosovo. At least 34 soldiers of NATO's peacekeeping mission have been injured in the clashes. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has fired his son Shotaro Kishida from his position of Executive Policy Secretary. This comes after the Prime Minister's residence was used for a private party last year. A magazine had published photos showing Kishida's son and some relatives attending the party. Kishida called his son's behavior inappropriate. The Japanese PM added that he's taking the responsibility for his son's actions by removing him from his position. Cambodia's King Norodom Sihamoni is in New Delhi. He received a ceremonial reception. He said that the visit reaffirms the strong civilizational bond between the two countries. The Cambodian king met Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Indian President Draupadi Murmu. He also met India's External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar. The leaders are set to hold bilateral talks. India's northeastern state of Manipur continues to see bouts of violence. At least 10 people were killed in clashes on Monday. With this, the death toll has crossed 80. Meanwhile, a contingent of the Indian Army, which was patrolling the violence hit areas, reportedly came under heavy gunfire. India's Home Minister, Amit Shah, has arrived in Manipur to monitor the situation. Former Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan has been called for questioning in the core Commander House attack case. He's been asked to appear before a joint investigative team at the Killa Gujar police headquarters in Lahore. The core Commander House was torched following an anti-government protest on May 9th. The protest was held by supporters of Khan's Pakistan Tehri Ke Insaf party. It was after Khan's arrest earlier this month. Republican Party lawmakers in the U.S. have spoken out against the new debt ceiling deal. The bipartisan agreement is facing a rocky start. Some Republicans have said that they would oppose the deal to raise America's $31.4 trillion debt ceiling. U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy earlier predicted that the deal would draw the support of most of his fellow Republicans. The Biden administration has condemned Uganda's anti-LGBTQ plus law. The U.S. government has called for its immediate repeal. Officials are also looking at the possibility of implementing sanctions on Uganda. The Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has said that the government is considering visa restrictions against Ugandan officials over the abuse of human rights. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro and Brazilian leader Luis Inácio Lula da Silva held bilateral talks on Monday. The two leaders met on the sidelines of the ongoing South American summit in Brazil's capital, Brasilia. Maduro and Lula discussed America's sanctions on Venezuela. They questioned the legitimacy of the 900 sanctions that Venezuela faces. Lula criticized the sanctions, calling them extremely exaggerated. Meanwhile, Maduro expressed his interest in having Venezuela as part of BRICS. Lula said he would personally favor it if Venezuela proposed a bid to join the grouping. Fireworks exploded in the hands of a Turkish civilian who was celebrating the re-election of Recep Tayyip Erdogan. This took place in Istanbul. 
the manufactured, uh, malfunctioned fireworks ricocheted off the ground as people ran for cover. No injuries have been reported from the incident. Protesters broke out, protests broke out in Senegal's capital, Dakar. This comes after lawmakers and their supporters were blocked from visiting the home of a prominent opposition leader. The leader is facing a trial on rape charges. Police fired tear gas at the demonstrators. The warring factions in Sudan have agreed to extend the ongoing ceasefire. Last week, Saudi Arabia and the US brokered a seven-day truce deal. The Sudanese Armed Forces and the Rapid Support Forces paramilitary group agreed to extend the truce by five more days. This comes after fresh clashes and air strikes were witnessed in the capital, Khartoum. Nigeria's new leader, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, was sworn in on Monday. Tinubu, a seasoned politician, emerged as the winner after a tightly contested election in February. He will be the 16th president of Nigeria. Tinubu took the oath of office in Nigeria's capital, Abuja. In his inaugural address, he vowed to rid the African nation of terrorism. He also said that he would tackle the issue of rising poverty, food scarcity and bureaucratic corruption. Authorities in Vietnam's capital, Hanoi, are bracing for a heat wave. Street lights have been partially turned off to keep the nation's power supply running. Warmer conditions have brought a surge in electricity demand in some parts of the country. This week, the maximum temperature is expected to reach 38 degrees Celsius. Heavy rains have caused floods in various parts of Spain's capital, Madrid. The flood water caused traffic jams and cars were seen getting submerged. Earlier this week, Spanish authorities had closed schools, universities and daycare centers as a precautionary measure. Hundreds of dead birds have washed up on a beach in Chile. This has prompted environmental concerns among locals and authorities. It's unclear what caused the death of these birds. Samples have been sent to a laboratory in the capital, Santiago. It will determine whether the birds have died due to a contagion. Authorities have warned locals not to collect dead birds to avoid any possible infection. Talks to reduce plastic pollution began in Paris on Monday. The aim to, is to agree to a binding treaty that will be implemented before the end of 2024. 50 countries are part of these talks. The dialogue will focus on limiting the production of more plastic. Ahead of the talks, some countries have said that one of the goals should be to ensure circularity. These countries are in favour of keeping already produced plastic items in circulation for as long as possible. Researchers have said that wealthy countries should pay for the damage they've caused to the environment in developing countries. In November last year, world leaders agreed to create a dedicated loss and damage fund. This aimed to provide financial assistance to poor nations dealing with climate disasters. Researchers say that a similar fund should be created for the loss of nature. This is because the loss of habitat in developing countries is driven by activities of developed nations. According to reports, Elon Musk is visiting China. This is Musk's first trip to China in more than three years. He's expected to meet senior Chinese officials. Reports say that he will also visit Tesla's Shanghai plant. The visit comes at a time when Tesla is facing intense competition from China-made electric vehicles. Elon Musk's Twitter could potentially be banned from Europe. The threat comes over the social media firm's withdrawal from the European Union's disinformation rules. Last week, Twitter pulled out of the EU's voluntary disinformation code. This included guidelines for big tech companies to fight disinformation on the internet. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka is due to convene on Thursday for its June policy meeting. Reports say that the Central Bank is expected to keep its policy rates at the same level. This comes as the country struggles to support its debt-laden economy amid high inflation. In April last year, Sri Lanka defaulted on its foreign debt for the first time. Financial firm HSBC is set to rename the UK arm of Silicon Valley Bank. Reports say that the unit will be renamed to HSBC Innovation Banking. In March, HSBC had bought the UK arm of the troubled lender for just one euro. Silicon Valley Bank had become the largest US bank to fail since the 2008 financial crisis. British supermarket Asda will buy units of UK-based petrol station operator EG Group. The retail chain will buy EG's UK and Ireland business. 
The company says that the deal will enable it to roll out Asda Express stores across the EG Petrol estate. According to Asda, this will help it overtake Sainsbury's to become Britain's second largest supermarket. Toyota Motor and German-based Daimler truck will combine their truck units in Japan. Reports say that both the units will be combined under a holding company. The shares of the new company are then expected to be listed on the Tokyo Stock Exchange. The deal agreement will likely be signed in the first quarter of 2024. Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes will begin her 11-year jail term today. Earlier in May, a court rejected her bid to remain out of prison. She had been sentenced for scamming customers and defrauding investors with her blood testing startup Theranos. UK-based Unilever has said that its chief financial officer, Graham Pitketley, will retire by the end of May 2024. Pitketley is stepping down after more than two decades with the consumer goods giant. He's been with Unilever since 2002. Pitketley was appointed the finance chief in 2015. Cryptocurrency exchange Binance has appointed Richard Teng to head its regional markets outside the US. Teng first joined Binance as the CEO of its Singapore unit in August 2021. At present, he already heads regions like Asia, Europe and North Africa. The development comes at a time when Binance is facing non-compliance issues from US authorities. India has filed a graft case against Britain's BAE Systems and Rolls-Royce. This is over an alleged criminal conspiracy in the procurement and manufacturing of 123 advanced jets used for training. The manufacturers of the jet trainers reportedly paid illegal commissions to middlemen. These middlemen then helped the companies get contracts from the Indian government. The case is based on the findings of India's Central Bureau of Investigation in 2016. Moving on to sports, the Chennai Super Kings beat Gujarat Titans in a last ball thriller in Monday's IPL final. Gujarat batted first at Ahmedabad's Narendra Modi Stadium. They put up a mammoth total of 214 runs thanks to a 94-run knock from Sai Sudarshan. Rain stopped play as Chennai, Chennai began their batting. As the clouds cleared, Chennai were given a revised target of 171 runs in 15 overs. This was using the Duckworth-Lewis method. Chennai batters took the game to the wire. They required 10, balls of the 10 runs of the last two balls. Ravindra Jadeja, Ravindra Jadeja smashed a 6 and a 4 on the last two balls to seal the win. With the victory, Chennai matched the record for the most successful IPL team, having won the tournament five times. Meanwhile, Gujarat fans also had something to cheer about. Gujarat batter Shubman Gill was awarded the orange cap for the highest runs this season. He scored 890 runs this year. He was given the player of the tournament award. Meanwhile, his teammate Mohammad Shami won the purple cap for being the highest wicket taker. Veteran Shami took 28 wickets for Gujarat this year with an economy rate under 8.5. In football, Lionel Messi is set to become a free agent in June. He has no plans to stay with his current club, Paris Saint-Germain. According to media reports, the Premier League is emerging as a potential destination for Messi. Several unnamed clubs have approached the Argentine footballer to come and play in England. However, Messi's camp is torn between going back to Barcelona or taking up a lucrative offer from Saudi Arabian club Al-Hilal. Meanwhile, Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola reached out to Neymar. Guardiola discussed fut the future plans of the Brazilian footballer. This comes after City's rivals Manchester United initiated talks with Neymar for possibly signing him in the upcoming transfer window. Neymar has indicated that he would like to leave his current club, Paris Saint-Germain, along with teammate Lionel Messi. Chelsea confirmed the appointment of Mauricio Pochettino as the new head coach. Pochettino signed a contract with Chelsea for two years with the option of an extension. The former Tottenham and Paris Saint-Germain manager will be tasked with reviving Chelsea's fortunes. Chelsea have lost eight of their last 11 matches this season. They finished 12th in the Premier League, their lowest ranking since 1994. Real Madrid forward Karim Benzema has received a two-year contract worth $200 million from Saudi Arabian club Al Ittihad. Benzema is considering taking up Al-Ittihad's offer and moving away from Real Madrid. 
He's Real's longest serving player. He's played 14 seasons with the club. If Benzema accepts Al Ittihad's offer, he will become the second big name player after Cristiano Ronaldo to join the Saudi Pro League. Napoli coach Luciano Spalletti is stepping down and taking a break from football. Spalletti has decided to take some time off for personal reasons. This comes after he led Napoli to their first Serie A title since 1990. Napoli are yet to announce a replacement. In basketball, Miami Heat beat Boston Celtics in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals. Boston had pushed Miami to the wire, coming back th from 3-0 to tie 3-all in the series. But he dominated Celtics in the final match, winning the game 103-84. Forward Jimmy Butler scored 28 points to seal the win for Miami. Miami Heat will now face Denver Nuggets in the NBA Finals. In athletics, some concerning news for Nida Chopra fans. The Indian javelin thrower has suffered a muscle strain while training. To avoid further risk, Chopra has decided to withdraw from next month's FBK Games in the Netherlands. In golf, Harold Varnier III won the Live Golf Washington DC circuit. Varnier finished with a final score of 12 under par. He birdied on the final hole to beat Brendan Grace by a single stroke margin. Along with the Lift Golf Trophy, Varner was awarded a cash prize of $4 million. Action film franchise John Wick is set to get a fifth installment. Entertainment company Lionsgate has confirmed that a fifth part is in the works. The group's chairperson said that a fifth movie will be organically grown out of how they are starting to tell stories. The film stars Keanu Reeves and Lance Reddick. The 57th edition of Czech Republic's Karlovy, uh, Karlovy Vary Film Festival has announced its lineup. There are 31 films across three categories in the showcase. Moreover, the festival will also host uh, premieres of international films. The festival will take place between the 30th of June to the 8th of July. Ice Spice has set the record for the biggest streaming debut for a female rapper on Spotify. The rapper released a song titled Karma with singer Taylor Swift on the 26th of May. The song clocked in over 5 million streams on the music streaming platform on the day of its release. It currently sits on number 5 of the global Spotify chart. Johnny Depp's band Hollywood Vampires has postponed its US tour dates due to the an actor's ankle injury. The shows scheduled for May 30th and 31st and the 1st of June have been pushed to July. Depp suffered a hairline fracture on his ankle following his recent appearances at the Cannes Film Festival. Singer Shania Twain performed at the Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles after 25 years. She took her Queen of Me tour to the arena as part of her North American schedule. The show was attended by actors Tom Hanks and his wife Rita Wilson and actor Kristen Bell. K-pop singer Aura was in the Indian city of Chandigarh yesterday where he performed with Korea's DJ Friday. The two performed several Korean hits like Dreamers and Love Is Right. They even sang some famous Bollywood songs. Aura recently released a remix of the Bollywood disco hit titled Jimmy Jimmy. K-pop band Monster X has announced its seventh official fan club concert this summer. The members will meet their fans, also known as Mon Bebes, on the 8th and 9th of July. A retro-style poster was released on the band's social media to announce the concert. Benedict Cumberbatch's house was attacked by a knife-wielding man last night. The man broke into the actor's North London home. He reportedly ripped the telecom and threw a plant against the garden wall. Cumberbatch, his wife and their three children were at home during the attack. The man was identified as Jake Bissell, a former chef at a hotel in London's Mayfair. He was soon arrested and given a three-year restraining order. Director Martin Scorsese is on a post con tour of Italy. He attended the Global Aesthetics of the Catholic Imagination Conference with his wife. After that, he met the Pope at the Vatican. He said that the Holy Father's appeal to let them see Jesus moved him. Based on his interaction with the Pope, Scorsese announced a film on Jesus Christ. The Super Mario Brothers movie has set a box office record in Japan. 
the film has grossed $71 million since its release on the 28th of April. It hit this milestone in just 31 days, making it the quickest ever by a non-Japanese animation in the Japanese market. The movie currently ranks third at the worldwide box office for animated films trailing behind the Frozen films. That's all for this episode of Fast and Factual. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to First Post.